everybody, I'm Hamsack, and today we're talking about the Resident Evil 4 demo that just was announced and released just a few days ago. Um, I kind of want to just go through it a little bit. I'll try not to have any really any spoilers. No, there's not a lot of spoilers anyways. It's a demo. I'll do some side-by-side by side videos showing what we experienced in the original and what we experience now in the demo. So we can kind of get a feel for what they're changing and what they're adding in. Well, first off, it starts out with a little cutscene. It's awesome because it's so much more detailed and focused on relevant information for Leon and his situation rather than the situation in Raccoon City, which is almost completely irrelevant to the story that we are involved in with Resident Evil 4. And it brings so much more context to the full game because we actually get to see different characters that we didn't really get to see in the old original cutscene. So if you want to avoid a lot of spoilers, if you want to just find out everything for yourself, um, go ahead and skip to the time stamp that's on screen right now and that will just take you to the gameplay and show you how to play the game and how to experience it to its full potential. After the cutscene, you are dropped off similarly to the original where you're in a sort of a forest. In the demo, you're alone because the officers have run off and you, your goal is to try to find them. In the original, they are just like, hey, good luck, have fun. <laughs> so uh, it's a little different. It actually feels more realistic. It's, it's kind of cool to see all the things that they've, they've kept in the game, like how, how true they're trying to be to the original because even they're, they're keeping this little tree cluster type thing right here <laughs> which is crazy because it's such a small detail but I, I appreciate that kind of thing easily off the bat you can tell it has such a a more darker tone than the original it's just darker period it's supposed to be more scary and really the original wasn't really scary off the bat there was more jump scares and and intimidation that was made it scary rather than the actual tone and environment then just like the original you happen upon this little house well actually now it's a bigger house this is a full-on lodge now and the original it was more of more of a smaller house it was supposed to be a lodge i think but now it's now it's much bigger and feels feels more like a place you could you could probably live in or at some point you could have lived in uh, because there's there's actually like a bedroom and like a kitchen slash dining area and this um, like sort of chamber pot or, or something it's just gross apparently and you happen upon a man uh, sorry to barge in like this Busco a un policía. Vino aquí. Just a, just a little unfortunate that we're not the ones to kill him. But that's fine. I think it would have been would have been cool to to have a little bit of a quick time there because you'd be able to uh, it, it, would, it would give more of a feel to the original. But again, this is a demo, so there's a chance that we will see that in the in the new um, the full release. So fingers crossed. But we will we'll see what uh, what kind of changes end up happening. From the demo to the full release after he is dead broken neck on the floor we take his key and we make our way downstairs there's like a hole downstairs it's so dark you need a flashlight for this area and it's so it's really creepy the first time you go in there you just you're expecting a jump scare you go all the way down there you find one of leon's escorts his escorts all all beat up and not treated 
very nicely. And Pimp Daddy Leon isn't going to let his escorts be treated like that. So he marches back over to the stairs where he is met with basically Captain America who just doesn't want to stay down. So it's Leon's job, Pimp Daddy Leon. It's his turn to try to make this Captain America type guy stay down. With this situation here, I it is a little goofy because in the original, Leon makes a point to point out to the uh, to the player that the first enemy you meet is not a zombie. So it's a little weird. To, but in this one, they decide to go with the zombie approach, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just something I noticed and is a little bit. It's definitely a change than the original was. After you finally put this guy down, you march your way upstairs and you hear a ruckus. So you, you sneak around, open the door, and you see a guy walking across in front of you. So being that at this point, it took you quite a lot of bullets to kill the first enemy, <laughs> you end up just trying to sneak past him and walk upstairs. And this time, the upstairs is far bigger than it was. It's it's still just that kind of landing at first, but there's also an added room. Hunnigan here. What's your sit rep? The president's daughter, Baby Eagle. It's likely she's in this village. Our intel was correct then. Well done. There's a location on a nearby lake. She may have been taken there. Copy that. I'll see what I can find. Hurry up. Something's happened to the people here. My escorts are happy. So you move on and you run across the wolf. It's a dog wolf thing. I don't think this is the wolf that we see in the original. This one is dead, but the colors are different. The one that we run across in the original is white. This one that's dead here is actually black like the other zombie dogs that we see later in the original, um, but we don't really get to see those in the demo. And then you end up finding the pitchfork guy on the hill. It's the same, it's, it's cool that they kept these things here. Like they're just, <laughs> there's another pitchfork guy. It's the same guy as in the original in the same sort of area there's a little shack on the left side with a guy in there it's the same guy as the original and the same little shack and everything so it's it's really cool the the little details that they kept in the game i i really appreciate their uh their attention to detail after that you happen upon the big gate so when you're first you first come up onto the village you are given the option to use your binoculars and see what's going on here you actually get to see what they do to, again, another one of Leon's escorts. Is that fair? Pimp Daddy Leon is pissed off now. And he's ready to take down all these guys. Oh, he's still alive. Ooh. Oh, hell no. What's cool is this village is very, very much the same as the old one. Everything... All the, the layout of the area, all the items you find, the breakable item, boxes, stuff like that. It's all in, if not the same place, very similar places. Shit. 
and it's really cool to see how they've changed up the the layout too um, they've made certain areas more accessible with two ramps to the shack up on the high on the hill on the right There's also a window in the smaller house um, across from the main house. the main house that you go into to find the shotgun. It now has a window just above the stairs that you can use to get out onto that uh, other side roof. Another awesome thing is the Dr. Salvador, the chainsaw guy, he's far more aggressive in this than he was in the original. He's very annoyed with people that get in his way, no matter if they're on his team or not. He will cut them down if they're in his way. <laughs> he, just, he just cuts them down and charges straight after you. He's far more aggressive and, and way more intimidating than he, than he was. He's way faster. Uh, he swings his chainsaw around a lot more. It's it's pretty intense. There's also parts where <laughs> where you can get tag teamed, where uh, one of the enemies can grab onto you and hold you, while another enemy comes at you and tries to kill you with either the chainsaw, or the axe, or whatever. And they have so it's kind of like a co-op situation with the enemy. So that's really that's really cool. It's definitely a scary situation when you get held by somebody and turned around and. You face the chainsaw guy coming at you while he's swinging like crazy, and you it's nuts. So that's how it goes, but how does it play? Some people expect they free ride through life, cruising by on good looks and luck. Let me tell you something right now. It don't work that way. Okay. Well, that was handy. The movement in this is a little tricky to get used to at first, but it isn't that hard, you know. It, it's just a little... A little different than the original, but it's pretty easy to get used to. The guns don't have a laser sight, but what's kind of cool is the handgun, if you inspect the different guns, you can see their attachments that are available for the full release. You'll be able to find more attachments for these guns. And for the handgun, you're able to see that it does have a laser sight attachment. So that's that's really cool to see that 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 will be returning in some form or another. I just wonder how it will actually affect the gameplay. What good does this extra laser sight do? You know, what, what was it actually going to affect besides making it feel more nostalgic? The gunplay feels pretty good. The handgun feels really good. It's really easy to use, it's pretty responsive. And there's one little thing though, when you headshot somebody, it doesn't stun them every time. It stuns them most of the time, but not every time. And also with the legs, um, they do fall down if you shoot them in the leg, but not every time. The shotgun and the handgun feel somewhat the same as what they would have been in the original, but instead of having that laser sight, like I was saying, they have a reticle that is a different shape depending on the gun and the spread of the gun, rather than just having a single uh, laser dot to tell you where your, your shot is going. And if you haven't seen a lot of the gameplay yet, you do have access to the TMP in this demo. I'm not sure if you'll be able to have access to it um, so early on 
in the full release, but this is how you get it. If you're curious and you wanted to get it right off the bat, um, what you do, it sounds crazy, but what you do is you discard everything out of your, your cache. So you want to do that before you open the gate to the village. So once you get into the village, you'll head to the right of the village, just behind where the cow is. And you'll see just past the cow is going to be a well with a ladder. You go down that ladder and in that dark little cellar, you'll see a chest on the ground. Open up the chest, that's where your TMP is. You can then shoot open some of the barrels and stuff for ammo and you'll also get a, a kitchen knife. <laughs> it's, it's weird, but a kitchen knife. It's not as durable as the um, first knife that you actually start out with, but after you get the TMP, you have it for good. Every time you reopen the demo and restart it, you'll have the TMP again, but you just won't find any TMP ammo really. And you can't craft any TMP ammo. With crafting, you have a lot of different materials now. It's similar to how Resident Evil 8 was, where you were able to find different resources to craft your healing items, as well as crafting your own ammo. So you can find different materials to, to make both. It's so much more helpful and it is just a really good change. Another thing that they've added is the knife. So the knife, uh, I know you had it in the first one, but this one has durability on it. Your durability goes down whenever you use it to block, to parry, to execute, or to assassinate people. Now you have two ways of using this for just attacking in general combat and those two ways won't affect the durability now stand back i gotta practice my stabbing <laughs> you can use this swing um to just deal damage normally or you can also use it to to parry people you swing as right as you see them start to swing you swing back and you could chop their limbs off and so they it makes it easier for you, but it does take up durability. So you wanna make sure you watch out for that. You could also use your knife in this way to knock things out of the air, like the axes, stuff like that, anything thrown. You can also use this to block. You can't block everything, but you can block the chainsaw. It sounds insane that you can do this, but it takes up a lot of durability when you do. With blocking, executing, and assassinating, it gives you a prompt to press a certain button. With executing, it's usually when they're on the ground, you can stab it into them to keep them from evolving or changing. They'll just die there instead of doing anything. Another way is when they're attacking you, you can use it to defend yourself by stabbing them to deal damage to them and get them off of you assassinating somebody you have to sneak up behind them and then hit the response button the uh, little prompt button it gives you and that will just instantly kill them as long as nobody sees you you are you're super stealthy and you can just sneak past people you can you sneak right by people without even having to worry about them or you can sneak up behind them and kill them and get the drop on them you know so it's really cool to see that they've added that into the game, more of a uh, stealth feature. Something with the knife that I've noticed, with this durability, the reason why I don't have too big of a problem with the durability is that it seems like we might be able to get more knife options. So I'm wondering if maybe we're, we'll be able to collect more knives, so we'll have some on hand just in case, being that we have this kitchen knife available in the demo as well. It makes me hopeful and kind of relieved, to be honest. I was definitely worried for a little while when I saw that durability uh, bar on that knife. Seeing that, seeing that made me nervous that we wouldn't be able to use the knife in the same ways. But it seems like we're still able to use the knife fairly often and it works pretty much the same. The thing is though, if you knife somebody in the face, it doesn't always stun them, similar to how the guns were working. Now you're probably thinking, that's probably it, right? That's 
that's a lot. So that's probably all that the demo has to offer. But no, it actually has a secret hard mode that is only available through this demo. It's kind of just an exclusive thing. I'm sure a lot of people have not actually even seen this. The way you access this is random. But listen up now, this is serious. Otherwise, is it start game, main story, new game, think of... Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to uh, keep opening up a new game and before it loads into the cutscene it will pop up a little screen that shows this image here and you will be able to choose either accept or decline this mode is hard you might be getting yourself and everybody else into a whole lot of trouble Definitely check that out if you if you want to give yourself a challenge. If if the normal difficulty seems a little too easy for you now, I don't really have any anything that I noticed that was a problem with the demo. I really enjoyed everything that I saw that was shown to me in the demo and in the trailers. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, more info videos or tips and tricks videos about the Resident Evil 4 remake when it comes out. Um, I will be making a bunch of videos like that, as well as a review video for the overall game once I've completed it. And if you want to check those out, please hit the subscribe button and the little bell. Leave a comment. Tell me what you guys think. Are you guys leaving? Are you guys feeling the same way that I'm feeling about the demo, about the trailers? Are you guys have other opinions? Let me know. Let me go know what you guys' concerns are, what you guys are super excited about, because I would love to hear what uh what everybody else is thinking that's pretty much it though guys so you guys have a good one and peace Where's everyone going? Bingo? Bingo?